The next thing I'm doing is I'm going to make the tail cone here. I'll be putting it off because I thought I'd let my metalworking skills improve first. Um, probably see from one of my other videos that I made an aluminium musical instrument uh, just to see if I could. So again, that's smaller scale metal shaping. Um, you can see there's a slight convex. It's not just a cone with a rounded end. It actually curves in slightly here. So I'm probably going to make it in two parts or even four parts welded together. I'll try two first of all with a, a weld on the side. Um, and then the end cap, I think I'll end up, I don't know. If I did it in four parts, I might be able to do it. Or I might make it separately. I don't know yet. So I've, um, I use some tape to mark out this and then very 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 carefully cut it with the one mil thick cutting disc and then I've put these little blocks here just inset by about three millimeters so that when I put my when I test fit my aluminium panel it'll be it gives me something to push it up against and this is my template so there's my cardboard template I've decided I'm going to make the end dome the end dome here last. So we transfer this to a piece of aluminium. It's cut very slightly oversized but not too much. Um, and now I've realised I haven't actually got a piece of aluminium big enough for the underside. I've got lots of pieces here not quite large enough so it's time to order a bit more aluminium sheet I think. Um, anyhow English wheeling time. So to get that curvature in the panel um, I've been using this curve wheel with the rubber the rubber on the top wheel which actually split I've had to repair it with super glue so it's kind of on its last legs but it puts that as you roll it back and forth um, it puts the curve into it because the rubber if you like is pushing it down onto this curve one so I don't know if you can see that, it's a very slight curve there now, inwards, and from the other side, hang on, same there, right, so you can see it's in the right place here, and I've tucked it under there, so I'll tape it all up tight so it can't move, and then I'll scribe a line on this where I need to cut. So you can see the scribe mark I've made so I can't use the bandsaw easily because uh, it would be better off to have the mark on the other side so I'm going to use the angle grinder with the cutting disc um, which is why I've got it sort of jammed onto the bench with all these clamps stop it moving and come down here and then flip it around and do the same this end right right you see that a bit dark here but you can see that join is about as good as I'm going to get today's job because I'm waiting for some aluminium to come for the uh, here, I'm trying to try and make a domed part which will fit on here and be welded along here there, so the cunning plan is put the aluminium over there. Um, I've made space for it to bow down as I hammer it. Put the aluminium on, then put these on, like that. And then put screws in a ring all the way around, straight through the wood, straight through the aluminium, down into the wood underneath. Um, and start just hammering in circles. There we are, right. Ready for being hit now. I think we're going to 
Right, just reality check time. Um, so that distance there is nine and a bit, nine and a half centimeters. So you can just see how far we've got here. What's that about? Five. So I might not reach the full nine and a half, but it'd be nice if we could get another three centimeters in there, perhaps for the push. So note to self, if you ever did this again, it'd be worth greasing the inside of this first because it kind of sticks in the hole, it doesn't want to come out. Anyway, I'm going to be pleased with that. So now I'm going to trim around the edge, then I'm going to see if it'll fit in the English wheel, if I can smooth this off using the English wheel. I'm not sure if I can or not. Well, the good news is it does fit in the English wheel without this is the most curved roller without the edges here binding on the inside each side of where the contact is which means I can smooth this down like this Good. Okay, so lots more work to make it fit, but Right, finally, we've got some more aluminium so I can start working on the tail cone. Um, message to large UK aluminium supplier when you stick your labels on. This is a pain in the arse. Pick, pick, pick. Sticky goo everywhere. The only thing I used to get it off is petrol. Even acetone doesn't seem to get it off. Okay, what can we see wrong here? 
this is too big I mean I could cut this off here and then it would mate up but actually in terms of the length of the tail cone it's probably where I want it so I'm gonna to have to make another bite the bullet and make another one of these you see um, I could trim it kind of round like that but then you'd have a bit of a corner where it was welded on so I think it's one of those things that's tempting to make it fit but I shouldn't do it I should do it properly so um, to be honest it didn't take me that long to make and it turned out better than expected so I think I'm just going to make a smaller one basically right so I've been shaping the under panel here so bit by bit by bit getting it it's a bit there's this plate here can it sort of come around it neatly meet up here so there'll be bolts here um, which may get to extend out there might be some piece of steel behind there um, So the thing is whether to weld these edges or have a piece of steel that comes out with it bolted in. Um, I might weld the edges. I'm not going to weld this area because uh, obviously this panel has to come off. Um, so I want the whole tail section to bolt to some steel sort of around this area each side so I can take the whole tail off if I need to. Um, even if just to prevent damaging it when I'm moving on and off trailers and things like that um, and also when I have it sideways across the back of my garage I can shorten the car and just take it off same with the nose so the next thing is I'm going to scratch along here and then cut this top panel to exactly match that and then I'll think about whether I'm going to tack weld it or what I'm going to do I'll, uh, just a little bit at a time so I've marked the mating edges and I've cut the sides along the scratch that I made and now um, I've been putting little oh, coming unstuck already I've been putting little slivers of aluminium sheet here 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 and here to shim it out so that when this goes back on like that one-handed See, it's, it's like perfectly flush when I you put the sticky tape back on because um, once it's tack welded at the sides it's not going to move again so I'd better make sure it's right and try and get this as flush as possible right I've been shimming I've been English wheeling I've got this curve exactly right it's pretty much perfect all the way around and it, it kind of rests there it's not being pulled in by sticky tape or anything um, it will just rest like that so uh, this end is also pretty tight to the former even without being taped down so the next thing is to put the underside on and see if I my cut is still in the right place or not so now That side's pretty good in terms of welding it. And this side. Uh, what we've actually got is the wooden former underneath is slightly too proud. But if you would allow for that, um, in terms of welding along there, that's also good. Well, you know how they say always have the right tools for the job. Well, for a lot of my life I never did so um, as we've seen from earlier videos in this series um, butt welding long lengths of aluminium together uh, gets a bit tricky because the ends often tuck under each other or it warps um, and you get these little welding clamps um, where are we right, which are great like for the ends but they're no good for the middle and you can get slightly bigger ones and slightly bigger ones than that but you can get these which I ordered yesterday and they came Amazon Prime next day and you can see these I can use to reach right in right well you can see now I've got at least a sporting chance of getting tack welds on so yeah. 
Well, it's a lot neater than my previous efforts. Just got the other side to do now. And that's the other side. So you see I, I melted it back a bit there, so I've had to build it back up with weld to get that line straight and then I'm going to have to um, flat wheel it down. And this end, I've learned from experience, the best way is cut your panels a bit too long. So when the dome goes on here, this will be cut off back here. So if the end here is a bit raggedy, it doesn't actually matter, it's going to get cut off anyway. In the end, I didn't um, cut the full circle here because, of course, the whole point of this is if I undo those bolts each side, I can draw the axle back out once the tail's taken off. If I put a huge circle here and weld it on, it's not going to work. So I've got more of a crescent shape welded at each end. I think I can jiggle the axle out if it came to it from the frame. Um, but if I did have to um, take this off, I would probably cut it and put, I have bolt-in plates, a bolt-in section in the middle. But the main thing is to get it in the correct shape now, as I can always cut it with a hacksaw, like here and here, and have a bolt, have a like a, a another plate welded on and then bolted through if I need to make it removable. A bit like I did here actually. So anyway, what I did was this aluminium bit wasn't quite a perfect circle. It was slightly lopsided. So seeing as the steel is, I clamped the aluminium to it. So it's as right up as possible. The top panel is all bolted in. So it's all in the right place. Then welded it in. So the steel kind of holds the aluminium into the correct shape, if you like. Um, so now I'm going to weld some tabs here, 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 sticking back, which I can tap threads into if I want. Uh, I'm not going to do it yet, but if I want to, I can. And even if they don't, they act as locators for the tail cone, because I want the edges of the aluminium two pieces of aluminium to butt up as perfectly as I can make them. Um, so I've MIG welded here and here. I'll take the body off and then finish up from the other side, maybe put a bracing strut like coming up from in here each side. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's going all right so far. So I've put two bracing struts in here. So that always ends up just under the edge of the top panel uh, and it can act as a support then for the tail cone. Um, Obviously not if you crash into it, but it should support the weight of the tail cone. It's just an aluminium empty cone and it still gives room to take the axle off. You know, when I unbolt those four bolts at each side and wheel it back, there's still room for it to kind of come out. So now I'm going to weld some little tabs on here for the tail cone to mount to. I don't know if I'll tap threads in them or not, but it'll locate it at least so it's not kind of so hopefully it's kind of level with the aluminium here. Here's a little trick I've worked out for welding on tabs. Um, let's put my gloves on. See there, there's my tab. I've sawn through it nearly all the way. So I'm gonna hold it there, weld it and then snap it off just stops you having to mess around with um, vice grips or anything like that. So let's give it a go. Right, and then... Ta-da! I don't know, I like it anyway.
Okay, so I've done those now. I've even smoothed them all off and made them look pretty. So the next thing is to put the main deck on and then test fit the tail cone again and see if they mate up. You'll notice I've put this sheet over the cylinder head. I've got an open cylinders here. So if I'm grinding, uh, that's not good. I don't want bits falling down. So I've sm I had cardboard over it, but I've also put this over it as well because um, my cylinder head's still being uh, fixed. So the next thing now is to trim all around here. So we're left with the dome and then use the English wheel. wheel with the most curvaceous thing on it which will is just less than the curvature of this so we're okay otherwise it galls on the edges um, not gonna use it with high pressure I just use it with moderate pressure because I'm just trying to smooth the bumps out and I'm not really trying to change the shape much <laughs> It's looking pretty good. Right, well, as you can see, that is a much, much better fit than the previous one. that looks promising there's about a the circle the wooden circle is about two mil narrower all the way around than the outside with a bit of massaging that is there's a bit more of a gap here but that's because the uh, metal dome is probably a tiny bit out of circle this was done with a compass so I'd rather trust that so this is plan A I uh, get this See, and I get that, yep. and I put this in there, and you can see it's not quite circular at the end, it's a bit distorted. I hammer that in until it's flush with the end, maybe. And then I sort of tape that so it can't move, and then I start trying to weld the dodo. Well, then I can see where I've got to cut. Right, so I've tapped it in and you can see this edge is perfectly flush. Apart from a little gap I'm going to have to fill there. So now I can draw around there and cut that off. And then I know I've got a perfectly flat circle. Apart from that little bit there. So, I'll turn this around now. You can see I've beveled the end slightly. There's a tiny lip all the way around, which I can then weld to. That's the plan. So if I put this, put this upright, it just locates 
the dome long enough hopefully for me to get some tack welds on So I've got them in three positions around here so I can take this off before it melts and leaves a sticky horrible gunge. It's done its job. Well that's come out pretty well. This is the yeah this is the top part. So I got that sort of perfect as perfect as I could. This is one of the sides and this is the underside little bit of a sort of dimple there bit, bit there um, but a lot of that should smooth out it'd be nice to get it so it's invisible the weld like on that musical instrument I made um, might be possible I'll have a go anyway I'm pleased with that I think that's about as good as I was ever going to get with my welding skills I think this helped because by hammering it in it forced the lower part into a circle and I could use my hammer to tap round till it was touching the wood all round and then because I beveled the edge there um, there's just a lip that I could place this on top of so it's a bit singed but you know I'll put up with that there's a smell in here of slightly burning wood so I better get out of here but uh, not because I'm going to burn the house down, it's just not that great for your lungs. Right, so far I've been grinding with 120 grit flat discs in the angle grinder. And that's got me to this point. See, I've got the welds pretty smooth down. So now I need to blend in kind of scuffs, if you like, with the rest of it to some degree. So I've moved to one of these rotary tools. And that's 240 grit, then I'm going to go to 400, then 800, which brings you to just starting to shine, a kind of dull shine. 800 will get you to, from experience. So that's the next step. So I made this kind of V-shape with bits of wood and got this lead shot bag to put it in there. And let's uh, just try the edges here to begin with. This is show you that I'm trying to see the all these sort of little scuff marks especially here I'm not going to get rid of all of them I'm just trying to sort of reduce it as much as possible and blend it in with the rest I'm going to go this side and then I'll start on going around the end there but it's almost invisible. Right, that's 240 grit in the polishing wheel, 400 then 800, um, very lightly. You can see 
If I do it anymore, it's going to have a really shiny tailcone and the rest of the car is going to be dull. So um, I haven't polished it yet with a polishing wheel or any kind of compound, but I think I might actually stop at this point for now anyway, because I'm going to decide whether I'm going to polish the whole car like this or not. Um, so I'm going to make some uh, holes here, tap some threads into the sides of the steel on the tail and then fit this now. So my next job is to tap some threads here and here, both sides, and then mount the tail cone. If you remember, I welded a little strip of steel behind it, it's about four or five mil thick, but it's like really mild steel. It might even just be iron bar. I'm not sure which, but either way, it um, it's reasonably easy to tap a thread into, and that's what I use for the whole perimeter frame. So. This drills on its last legs, but it doesn't die, it fuses to die, so we'll keep going. So I actually make the hole in the aluminium a touch bigger. Um, this is my cheat way of doing it. I should take the panel off really, but be careful, you can do it like this. This is my tap. Um, I prefer the long handle, obviously sometimes you can't use it if you type for space. Uh, it stops you wiggling it around side to side, it's longer, that's what I find. I'm um, using WD-40, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to use a kind of slightly thicker kind of cutting oil, but it's convenient and it evaporates. So These are brittle, it's very easy to snap them. So I'm going like a turn and then a quarter turn back and I'm just taking it nice and easy. You can tell by the feel after a lot of the time. If it gets tight, don't force it. Just go back a quarter and then go forward a half. Okay, slight lip there, but pretty damn close. Can't complain, really. Slight lip there. I could always weld a tab on there to push it out. Although, if it's a little bit proud here and a little bit in there, basically this needs to come across a touch. That will probably just fix it. Let me just, if I lean on it. Yeah, look, see? It just needs shimming out here slightly. Or, Put a bolt there and just lean on it, then do the bolt up. Probably a shimmer would be better. 